St. Augustine, Florida, our nation's oldest city, was the site of one of the first historic Fresnel lens restorations in the country. In 1986, a child with a high-powered rifle fired two shots at the First Order lens, damaging 13 of its 362 prisms. In 1992, the Coast Guard and a team of volunteers took on the challenge to restore the 118-year-old lens, paving the way for future Fresnel lens restorations around the country. The St. Augustine lens prisms were fabricated from plate glass that went through an extensive machining and polishing process. Just south of St. Augustine at Ponce de Leon Inlet Lighthouse, the Cape Canaveral First Order lens was moved to the Ponce Inlet Lighthouse where it was restored and put on display in their lens exhibit building. But it was missing two of its bullseye lenses. This project paved the way to experiment with acrylic rather than glass. The acrylic lenses proved to be less expensive, but still achieved the optical properties of the original glass. The bullseye panel in the middle is the original glass. On each side of this panel are the two acrylic replacements. These restorations, along with the manufacturing of acrylic prisms, led the way to the development of full-scale historic Fresnel lens replicas. The earlier replica prisms and framework were manufactured using a machining process. One of the first lenses was constructed for the Ancloak Key Lighthouse on the west coast of Florida. The modern Coast Guard optic was replaced with the 4th Order Fresnel lens replica. An experiment was conducted at the Park Service facility to verify the performance of the lens. This view from the water shows how the bullseye panels produce the characteristic flash of a Fresnel lens. Notice how the panels light up the Park Service building in the background. The lens was divided into six segments, four flash panels and two blank panels that displayed a characteristic of four flashes followed by a short eclipse. Once the test was completed, the lens was delivered to the Anclo Key Lighthouse where it was installed as an aids to navigation. Since the Anclo Key project, there have been several Fresnel lens replicas manufactured for lighthouses around the country.
Recently, the manufacturing process has changed to improve the quality of the replica lenses. Engineering is the first step in the development of the lenses. Calculations are performed to develop the cross-section of the lens. The prisms are designed to capture the light from the focal point of the lens and redirect it to exit horizontal, sending it seaward. There are two types of prisms, dioptric prisms, which uses only refraction or the bending of light to alter its path, and catadioptric prisms, which uses both refraction and reflection to redirect the light. These prisms are also arranged to capture all the light from the lamp and positioned one over the other to send out a solid sheet of light. This laser light demonstration shows how the light rays are refracted and reflected inside a standard Fresnel lens cross-section. Notice how the exiting ray remains horizontal as the laser rotates to any position. The light is completely captured, not allowing any light to escape as it transitions between the upper prisms. The Fresnel lens design is very efficient in the way it captures and redirects as much light as possible and sends it seaward. It's important to engineer and manufacture the lens to these high standards to achieve the same results. This model represents the classic Fresnel lens that was exhibited at Harbor Beach Lighthouse in Michigan. The lens is designed to the finest detail, including door latches, hinges, and hardware. The model can also be used to check for fits and clearances. Ultimately, the model is used in the manufacturing process to accurately recreate the prisms and framework. The Harbor Beach lens is a fourth order 10 sided lens with five red exterior panels to achieve the alternating red and white flashing characteristic. The most important component in the Fresnel lens is the manufacturing of the prisms. A new process is being used called rapid prototyping. This process is a three-dimensional printing process where the master part is grown out of a plastic material. This computer process assures the accuracy of each prism shape. From the master, a tool is manufactured to cast each prism out of acrylic. In this process, an autoclave is required to heat and pressurize the liquid acrylic as it cures. The master, or computer-grown prototype, is on the left. In the center is the as-cast acrylic prism, and on the right is the finished prism after the sanding and polishing process. The casting process has many advantages over machining, including being able to tint the acrylic to achieve the greenish hue that is apparent in historic prisms. Also, the annealing process improves the acrylic material properties. The frame manufacturing is performed by a machining process or by using a water jet cutter. The water jet cuts through the brass material using a high pressure water stream mixed with abrasives. After the machining and cutting process, the brass is sanded and polished to a mere finish. The assembly of each prism is accomplished by shimming each prism from the brass frame and glazing it in place using DAP 33 window glazing compound. This sixth order replica was manufactured with the new casting process and demonstrates the two basic styles of Fresnel lenses. On the left is a fixed or belt lens and on the right a rotating or bullseye style lens. The light pattern of a fixed lens is a band of light from top to bottom. The light pattern of a rotating lens fills the entire panel and is also called a flash panel. Recent projects were completed with the newly cast and tinted prisms. 
These bullseye lenses were manufactured to restore a fourth order lens at the Stony Point Lighthouse in New York. These prisms were also cast and tinted to match the original color of the Point Arena lens in California. Because of the historic significance of classic Fresnel lenses, the Coast Guard has adopted guidelines regarding the care of borrowed lenses. They must be displayed in a climate-controlled museum environment and will not be allowed to be installed back in the lantern room of a lighthouse. Fortunately, with the ability to manufacture reproduction lenses, organizations wishing to display a historic style Fresnel lens in their lighthouse now have an option.